Memory reference exceptions. It's memory reference exceptions all the way down, isn't it? You guys are all dumb and stupid. You kept telling me how my game was good, and looking back, it was utter trash. It was so bad that I deleted it all and started again. I know I told you guys I wouldn't upload again until I had the first boss implemented, and if that's all you're looking for, do not click off under any circumstances. But I'm gonna lose my motivation again if I don't have your nice comments to keep me going, so here you go. There's a lot new here that I'm excited to talk about, and a lot less excited to edit later, so let me get right into it. First off, I did end up scrapping the previous game. The files are all there, but they're totally abandoned. The reason why I did this was just because my code was formatted so incredibly poorly that it would have been impossible to expand on over time, which would have made development really, really slow. My new code is still more bloated than I thought it would be, but it definitely is more expandable than the previous version. And uh, making a totally new game did help with a lot of things. First off, and probably the first thing you notice, is the new main menu. My previous game had each button hard-coded in, so I couldn't really easily edit the menus at all, but this new version has an easier way to handle buttons and sliders. It's not a massive change though, uh, it's everything else that's changed that's big. The second thing you'll notice is that the screen is much more zoomed out. Seeing as Eclipsic will be more boss-oriented than Terraria, I think this is a good change. There's also RGB lighting, which Terraria does have, but previous versions of Eclipsic didn't. Adding this just makes the game look so much cooler in my opinion, and it's definitely a vital feature if I ever want to see cool builds in the future r slash Eclipsic subreddit that will definitely exist someday. Speaking of cool builds, TEXTURING! It won't ever exist. I know, I know. It would be really cool. Your game looks like MS Paint, yada yada. These are the textures for just one block in Terraria. And Terraria has nearly 200 blocks. If I even only had 50 blocks in total, which is a quarter of what Terraria has, and I already have 30 in the game, I would need to make 50 of these sheets to have each block have its own textures, and I am not spreading all that. If any of you guys think you could do that, and I can figure out a way to get the game to load the textures without deleting your RAM, uh, you can absolutely send me your own textures over on Discord. Otherwise, I'm not doing that myself. So, the screen is more zoomed out, and there's RGB lighting, so what? Does this really justify an entire reset back to zero. Uh, but wait, there's more. You guys have been bugging me, mostly in real life, to make background walls for my game. I've succumbed to your demands and I have finally done it. Now, there aren't any special features for walls at the moment. Uh, they're entirely just there for looks, but they will be very important to the game eventually. Along with walls, there's also polished visual changes. The UI looks better, in my opinion. There's screen shake when you attack or get hit, and most importantly, weapons are animated cooler. The melee ones, at least. You can tell they're inspired by the Terraria overhaul mod, and I think they're a lot cooler than the previous Eclipse 6 melee weapons. Uh, bullets now also have the ability to collide with the map, and weapons can inflict debuffs on mobs when they hit. I currently only have three debuffs implemented. Flame, which deals tick damage. Potion Sickness, which prevents using Panacea. This game's version of healing potions. And last but not least, Soul Heal. Soul Heal is unique because it benefits the player, and you can get it by using weapons that have Soul Steal. Soul Steal is an ability that certain weapons weapons have that steal souls on kill. Weapons will either apply stronger buffs the more souls you have, or will allow you to use crit attacks with souls. Oh yeah, crit attacks are another thing I stole from Terraria Overhaul. Soul heal in specific slightly buffs your regeneration the more souls you have. Talking about soul steal as a feature though, brings me to the subclasses. There will be a whole ton of subclasses in this game, and I listed them off in my community posts, which you should definitely look out for, but in case you haven't seen them, I'll list them off here. So there's the melee subclasses. The sword, it's versatile, simple, mid DPS, mid range, everything you know about swords from Terraria still applies here, right? It's just the sword. There's the scythe, which is a little bit more complicated. It functions a lot like the sword in a whole lot of respects, uh, but it'll be more build dependent. So you might select a specific scythe to work with the armor that you have and the potions that you have and all that so that you can have higher DPS or higher defense or something because scythes will give different buffs uh, unique to each scythe. There's the hammer, which is simple and it gives you overshield, but it'll have lower DPS on average and it'll be a little bit harder to hit things with. So it's if you want to be tanky and stuff. And then there's also the war axe, which is high DPS and it's tricky to hit with. You really should focus on crits with that one. There's the mage subclasses. So there's elemental, which focuses on AOE attacks and debuffs. So a whole lot of crowd control. If one of these steals souls, uh, it'll usually do that to 
buff the player. There's energetic weapons as well, and they're usually laser beams and bullet projectiles, your more conventional magic weapons, and they'll focus on raw damage output. You'll have more max mana for this, and also buffs will typically up your DPS if one of these weapons steals a soul. There's the ranger subclasses, which are just split between sniper and stealth. So sniper is slow, like sniper weapons, of course, and they focus a whole lot on critical chance. So getting just massive damage on a single hit. And then there's stealth weapons, which usually will have faster fire rates and like a consistent DPS, but they also allow you to dodge attacks a whole lot better. There's the summoner subclasses, which are split between having tankier summons that you have to control and buff and weaker summons that you fight alongside and you just keep on summoning. I'm hoping there's something for everyone here and I'm also hoping to keep all of them viable. I'm looking at you, yo-yo subclass. Now that we've gotten weapons out the way, I'd just like to finish off by talking about world generate. The world is still just as large as in the last version of Eclipsic, but it's generated totally differently. The previous version used Voronoi noise, but the new version entirely uses just Perlin noise. A one-dimensional Perlin noise is used to calculate the ground height, and an octave Perlin noise is used to cut out the caves. I'm gonna be using different noises for things like ore generation later, but right now the generation is really simplistic, and the only point of interest at the moment is the dungeon. The last version of Eclipsic definitely had some structures that you definitely could call procedural, but they weren't very good. I wanted to fix this for the new version, and I think I did. The pyramid and the jungle arena in the last game used very specific pre-programmed rules and were only procedural in that I hadn't hand placed every block myself. The dungeon in this newer version instead uses an algorithm called MBSP, or Messy Binary Spatial Partitioning. Now, that sounds really complicated, and it kind of is, but let me explain it to up the runtime of this video. Basically, we start with a box that looks like this. Our first step is just to cut it in half randomly somewhere along the side. Now that we've cut it, we just do that again. We pick one of these two boxes that we've created and cut it in half again, and then pick one of the two new boxes we've just created and cut it again, etc., until the boxes are small enough. We repeat this for all the other still large boxes, and once all of the boxes are small enough, we should have something that looks like this. This is our messy binary spatial partition. Messy because we sliced randomly instead of directly in the middle. Binary because we cut it into two pieces and it's a spatial partition. Our next step, once we have this grid of wonky rectangles, is just to draw a wiggly line over it. Next, we check to see if each box is touching this wiggly line, and if it is, we mark it as air. Once we have every box that we know is air, we then just loop over the rest of all the boxes. If their center point is within a certain distance to the center points of any air boxes, we set this one to a wall box. Then we just fill in every wall box with walls and every air box with air and keep the rest filled with whatever they were filled with before. Add some post-processing to add torches and platforms and ta-da, we have a dungeon. I didn't come up with this algorithm myself, but I am quite proud of myself for implementing it. There are some fixes I need to make with it to make it perfect, but I think it works just fine for now. Next video will cover mainly world gen and uh, we'll get the world looking spiffy. And then I'll probably work on progression for a really, really long time until the first boss is done. Thanks so much for watching. Send this video to your grandma or your best friend. I don't know. Wash yourself always and uh, goodbye.